American people are creating for themselves a new and welcome institution, the weekend holiday. 52 times a year, there is increasing opportunity for millions to enjoy more of the pleasures of the land they live in. America, America, the Czech is great from thee. And from thy good brotherhood, from sea to shining No matter how carefully the weekend holiday is planned, the most rewarding moments are usually those that are found in a surprise adventure, a unique experience, or in the discovery of a new friend. I would remember, remember my first ukulele lesson. <laughs> that was something. My mother dressed me all up, you know, my little Buster Brown collar, you know, little black jacket, little black velvet jacket, little uh, collar, and uh, little black leather shoes. And when I got to the studio, my teacher took one look at me and screamed. <laughs> See, my mother had forgotten my little black pants. <laughs> I always used to have this thing along. Now I'm going to take it with me wherever I go now. Which reminds me, I got to go. I got a friend of mine that's trying to get in the ukulele business. And I got to go help him pull a few strings. Hey! <laughs> oh, say, gracious, that, that Godfrey, he is a cop. I, I wish we had a dozen more on the payroll like him. Howdy, folks. Say, you have customers waiting, Mr. Perkins. Oh, well, that's what we like to hear. Well, seems you've been a hiking. Yeah, I used to do a lot of hiking myself when I was young. Well, howdy, oh, folks. Oh, 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 sorry, I can't wait on you now. I got an order I got to fill. Oh, oh sorry. Sorry. Well, it's for old lady Snavely. She's always in a hurry. <laughs> Why don't you try guessing how many kernels of corn there is in that glass thing there? That'll kind of exercise your brains. <laughs> Always better to use them while you get them. Where, uh, where was you planning on going hiking? Well, we're headed for Hammond's Pond. Is that so? Well, you wouldn't ever catch me near there. Why? What's wrong with the place? Oh, dangerous spot, that one. Yep. Old Jed Hammond, he comes brief there about. Uh -huh. Well, I'll tell you. Gee! One spring circus stop here. I'm hungry. Yes. Uh, hey. He fell head over heels for the female lion king. Make oh, mine part of yeah. uh, Maybe you'd be interested in some shooting irons. I got some caulkers here. <laughs> no, but we would like some ice cream. Oh, some ice cream. Yeah. All right, then I'll get you some ice cream. Well, uh, Chocolate chip, please. Chocolate chip. Yeah, I'll take butter crunch. Butter crunch. Peppermint stick. Peppermint stick. And burnt almond for me. Burnt almond, yes. Well, we ain't got none of them. But I got sweet fern, juniper, elderberry, bayberry, wintergreen, and sassafras. I keep them all in one freezer to save space. There you are. Mmm, this ice cream's wonderful. Yeah. Well, it comes from Hard Pickering's farm. He's a partner of mine up the road. He keeps Eskimo cows. I never heard of that breed. No, not many folks have. Well, Eskimo cows, they're might peculiar, but they are mighty smart. I mean, if Hard says to one of his young heifers that we need some black raspberry over here, my gracious, that critter, she traipses all over creation until she finds a patch. Oh, <laughs> come now, Mr. Perkins. Uh, that's right. Of course, it is a mite unhandy at chore time, because you got to wear mittens. <laughs> you know, Eskimo cow, she don't give just plain milk. No, sirree. She gives natural ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> That's cold.
cold, but it'll thaw in a few minutes. <laughs> Say, what does this uh, IPWAA mean, if uh, some old Indian name? No, no, no. Well, that's my own idea. It's alphabetical for in partnership with all America. Well, you run this store all by yourself, don't you? Say, how come all this partner stuff? All by myself? Well, you might think so. But according to my reckoning, I've got close to 10 million partners. Take it easy, Pop. Hear that fellow singing? Como, he's one of my partners. Darn good one, too. Because God made me mine, I'll cherish thee through light and darkness through all time to be and pray his love may make our love divine because God made the night. You must have a lot of bookkeeping with so many partners. Son, I bet you never realized that it took over 500,000 partners to bring you that pack of 20 cigarettes. Are you sure this isn't another tall tale? No, sir. I can prove this one. Now, first, there's 100,000 farmers that grow the tobacco. And raising tobacco, that keeps a man busy 13 months of the year. You know, down in tobacco land, they claim there's another month called tobaccoary made up of all the extra days and hours that a farmer has to work to grow his crop. The capital of Tobacco Land, USA, is that big modern factory where your Chesterfields are made. Well, sir, just by watching, I found out the recipe for making milder, better tasting Chesterfields. You take nothing but the really fine, ripe, sweet leaves grown in the seven states of tobacco land usa then after this choice american tobacco has been improved and made milder by natural aging why you add just the right amount of aromatic turkish and when it comes out of the machines that toss and blend the tobacco you have got the right combination of the world's best tobaccos chesterfield when I was visiting the factory, we did some lightning calculating. Rain or shine, over 300 million Chesterfields are turned out every day. Except, of course, Sundays and holidays. And the girl partners, <laughs> they may be pretty, but they are smarter than whips. Do you know they've trained them automatic cigarette-making machines? Yes, sir. Trained the machines so that if any one of the 20 Chesterfields ain't perfectly made and perfectly packed, why, the machine will toss that package out. I tell you, it takes planning to keep the factory supplied with enough fine tobacco to make 300 million Chesterfields every day, except Sundays and holidays. Well, sir, the Liggett and Myers folks, they've got a whole big city with streets lined with nothing but tobacco agent warehouses, where the fine tobacco is improved and made milder while waiting to be made into a Chesterfield. You know, down in tobacco land, they've turned the first tobacco factory into a museum. Not quite a hundred years ago, right after the war between the states, a shop for processing tobacco was built by Washington Duke. Well, sir, it wasn't long until Washington Duke's packaged tobacco, it caught on, and everybody started rolling their own. Yes, sir, folks used to drive out into the country and meet the tobacco man, just to make sure that they'd have next week's supply of makings. Well, today, the Chesterfield Research Laboratory alone is 20 times the size of Mr. Duke's first tobacco factory. 
A research laboratory, you know, is mighty necessary. And what goes on inside of it, it occupies the time of partners who have PhDs tacked on after the names. When Liggett and Meyer says Chesterfield smoke milder because they're made milder, why, they've got scientific evidence to back it up. I always tell customers that if a better cigarette is ever made, it'll be Chesterfield that makes it. So just keep on smoking Chesterfields and you'll be sure of modern, up-to-date smoking pleasure. Arthur D. Little, Incorporated, is the well-known industrial research organization of Cambridge, Massachusetts. Well, sir, folks that work in the Little firm, they're taste experts. Men and women who make it their full-time business to know what tastes good and what don't. After smoking and smoking, not only Chesterfields, but also thousands of cigarettes of leading brands, Arthur D. Little Incorporated wrote a letter to Liggett and Myers Tobacco Company saying that Chesterfield was the only cigarette in which they found no unpleasant aftertaste. Living in Tobacco Land, USA, are all really indispensable partners, the tobacco farmers. Men like my friend Claude Whitehead of Chatham, Virginia. Claude's lived all his life on a tobacco farm. Every year when the weather turns mild, you'll see this same sight. Claude, busy as a cricket, out in the field setting out the young tobacco plants. Now that's a job he always does himself compares it to laying the cornerstone of a new building. Anything important must get off to a good start. Claude says, if you take good care of your tobacco, your tobacco will take good care of you. Now, the towns all around where Claude lives, they're what you'd call tobacco communities. Pretty near everybody has got something to do with raising tobacco. And almost everything that goes on in the neighborhood is because of tobacco. A farmer, he don't always get to town quite as often as he'd like to on account of the work he has to do with his crops. If a farmer needs a haircut bad, well, you can bet it's because he's been busy on the farm. Now, when Claude and other partners ain't talking tobacco or politics, they're probably talking about another commodity that comes from tobacco land. The same soil that grows the finest burly tobacco in the world grows the bluegrass for the finest horseflesh in all creation. farmer, he generally tries to arrange his work so that he can take at least one day off during the racing season, provided it's early in the season before the work at home gets too heavy. Derby Day at Churchill Downs brings out the biggest crowd of the year. Summer, tobacco commences to ripen, and there's no time for outside activities. Tobacco requires more hand work and more hard work than any other crop that's grown. It takes 7,800 tobacco plants to fill just one acre, and every blessed plant has to be tended by hand. Now, when you consider 
that enough acres are planted to grow two billion pounds of tobacco every year, why, well, you get an idea of how many partners are involved. Every single leaf has to be picked and sorted by hand. And there's no substitute for the care and know-how that's found on the tobacco farm. The Curin Barn, that's a special building developed by tobacco farmers. It's 20 feet square and 20 feet high, stoutly beamed and fully insulated. Actually, you know, it's a big, roomy oven for drying the tiers and tiers of tobacco leaves. A thousand pounds of them that are racked up to the roof tree, but with enough space around each leaf for the hot air to circulate. Up-to-date farmers like Claude Whitehead they have automatic oil heaters in their curing barns. But the wood fires that once lighted up the entire countryside during harvest time, they're fast disappearing from tobacco land. The happiest farmers in tobacco land are those who raise tobacco that turns to the color of rich gold when it's cured. A gold that means money in the farmer's pockets when his crop goes to market. The farmer knows that if he has the really fine, ripe tobacco, the kind used in the manufacture of Chesterfields, that fine tobacco will bring the highest price. If any of you are figuring on a visit to tobacco land, you'll find that folks on the farms have more free time after the tobacco crop has gone to the auction room. The farmers, they always seem a lot happier when they've received their checks. That's the time the carnival fellas set up shop, figuring that the folks in tobacco land will want to spend some of their new money for a bit of fun and relaxation. Whitehead and his wife, they're great square dancers. Old Claude, by Gary, he's quite a hoedowner. Say what you like. But growing tobacco provides a living for millions of partners besides those in tobacco land proper. The Chesterfield people, they spend a small percentage of the cigarette dollar for advertising. That helps popularize the product and increases sales. This means work for hundreds of thousands of more partners, from the boys that deliver magazines and newspapers to that famous partner who happens to be one of my favorite stars. Claude Whitehead, he helps out in sales promotion too. He helped originate the be your own cigarette expert idea. Claude says, 
Smell an open pack of Chesterfields and you'll see for yourself. Chesterfields smell milder. Then light one up and you'll find that Chesterfields smoke milder. Any tobacco man will tell you that tobaccos that smell milder will smoke milder. Now, when I talk about my partnership idea, folks seem surprised when they're told that the little blue tax stamp on each pack of Chesterfield cigarettes means that the Liggett and Myers Tobacco Company has paid the United States Treasury seven cents. Every day, the Chesterfield folks, they pay a federal tax amounting to more than a million dollars. Today's check, it may help buy something to strengthen our national defenses. Day after day, the U.S. tax on cigarettes, it contributes directly and substantially to making America a better land for everybody to live in. It takes a lot more calculating to figure out just how many partners it really takes to get you your pack of 20 Chesterfields. You see, your cigarettes travel first to 6,000 wholesale partners. And then, because merchants know that whatever else they sell, a supply of cigarettes will be a convenience to the customers, there are more than one million retail partners who sell Chesterfields. Wholesale partners, they have to keep retail partners, just like myself, stocked up with fresh supplies of Chesterfields. That takes a lot of travel and transportation. Oh, howdy, son. <coughs> Folks, meet another partner. We've known each other a good many years now. Yep. Mr. Perkins, hmm? I've got orders to deliver this to you. Personally. Oh. Well, say. <laughs> Direct from Hollywood. Hollywood. Hollywood, California. Well, let's see what we got here. I'm obliged to you. Uh, <clears throat> says, dear partner Perkins, thanks for your letter. You certainly are right. In America, we are all partners. We who grow things, we who make things, we who sell things, and we who buy things. Sincerely, your partner, Bing. Bing? Yeah. Hey, oh, it's about time for Bing right now. Would you like to swing on a star? How'd you like to carry movies in a big fat jar? And be better off than you are. Or would you rather be a mule? A mule is an animal of funny ears. Kicks up at everything he hears. His back is brawny and his brain is free. He's just plain stupid with a stubborn streak. And by the way, if you hate to go to school, you might grow up to be a mule. And all the monkeys are do. Every day you eat quite a few. Levitt Perkins Ipwa store is one of more than a million retail outlets for your cigarette. But each of them is in partnership with All America, and all contribute to your smoking pleasure. Thank <laughs> you.